What's good, guys? My name is Victor Olalakon, but y'all can call me Vic. I was born in Lagos, Nigeria, and raised in Baltimore, Maryland. I'm a licensed pharmacist in both my home state of Maryland and Wisconsin. And this is Farm D Vic. Today, we'll be talking about lean. Lean is a handmade beverage made from a mixture of Sprite and codeine promethazine solution, a combination of codeine, an opiate painkiller and cough suppressant, and promethazine, which is also a cough suppressant and can be used for nausea and migraine headaches as well. The mixture of the codeine promethazine solution, which is usually purple along with Sprite, results in a concoction that's light purple or pinkish in appearance. Other forms of the beverage see people use pineapple soda, like pineapple Fanta or pineapple crush, instead of a lemon lime soda, giving the mixture a more muddy look. Other mixings used for sweetness and taste include Jolly Ranches and Skittles. The beverage has gained a lot of popularity over the past two decades, growing from a local fad in Houston, Texas, to a worldwide addiction. The drink has become so popular that people dedicate clothing to it. The drink has been known to be very addictive and has been linked to the deaths of many, including being linked to the deaths of DJ Screw, Pimp C of UGK, and most recently, Juice World. But what makes Lean so addictive and why has it been linked to so many deaths? In order to understand this, we must first gain a better understanding of the most addictive drug in lean, codeine. As said earlier, codeine is an opiate painkiller and cough suppressant, available in various forms, including oral tablet form and oral solution form. Codeine works as an opium painkiller working on opioid receptors in the body to suppress pain. Codeine also works as a cough suppressant by working on the medullary cough center and the medulla oblongata of the brain. Now what people like from lean is the euphoric high feeling they get from the substance. Codeine and opiates do this by stimulating reward centers in the brain, causing the release of endorphins. I want to reiterate that codeine is an effective cough suppressant and painkiller when used correctly. This is not a video about codeine being a bad drug, but the main goal of this video is to educate against the misuse and abuse of codeine, especially in its use to make lean. Now for lean, the solution form of codeine is used, where it is generally formulated with other drugs, such as promethazine, a cough suppressant known by the brand name of Phenergan, with some formulations containing phenylephrine, which is the active ingredient in Sudafed PE, and acetaminophen paracetamol, better known as Tylenol. For the purposes of lean, codeine with promethazine is the most popular form of the drug used. Now, codeine is what we call a pro-drug. A pro-drug, in simple terms, is a drug that is inactive, but is metabolized in its active form once in the body. Codeine is metabolized and delivered by a particular cytochrome P450, which is often abbreviated as CYP or SIP. SIPs or cytochrome P450s are enzymes in the liver known to metabolize drugs. The SIP responsible for metabolizing codeine is SIP2D6. Do you guys know what codeine is metabolized into? Morphine. Here's a picture of codeine. Here's a picture of morphine. Now here's a picture of heroin. As you can see, all three of these drugs have insanely similar structures. Food for thought. Now, codeine, morphine, and heroin all have the same main group. The main difference between all of them is seen in the alkyl or side group of each drug. Now let's get into a little bit of organic chemistry. Codeine, as you see, has this CH3 or methyl group on the side chain. Remember, codeine is an active in this form. So codeine before being metabolized really isn't doing anything in the body. Now when codeine undergoes metabolism from sip 2 d 6 it undergoes a dealkylation, a fancy word saying that it gets this CH3 methyl group removed, and boom, you got morphine. With the OH or hydroxyl group in place, the codeine, which is now morphine, is now soluble and able to do its work in the body. Now, there is genetic variability in sip 2 d 6 amongst people. Some people are what we call rapid or ultra rapid metabolizers, while others are slow metabolizers. Thus, without genetic testing, you can't be sure of how codeine can affect you, as it can affect everyone differently. Some people get little to no effect from it, those are the people that are slow metabolizers, while others are extremely sensitive. People who are ultra rapid metabolizers are more likely to get negative side effects from the drug. Codeine has a plethora of side effects, with the most common being nausea and vomiting, dizziness, constipation, and drowsiness, with more serious side effects including liver damage, kidney damage, and respiratory depression. In regards to the liver and kidney damage, as stated earlier, codeine is metabolized to morphine by the liver with the CYP2D6 enzyme. Morphine is then broken down and excreted by the kidney. So codeine can cause both liver and kidney damage because it's metabolized by both organs. 
Coding can cause respiratory depression, meaning it can make it harder for someone to breathe. Do you know what else causes respiratory depression? Promethazine, the drug co-formulated with codeine. Promethazine, also known as Phenergan, is a first-generation antihistamine, working by blocking histamine 1 receptors in the brain, as well as some dopamine receptors. With this, it has various usages, including being used to prevent nausea, relieve allergy symptoms, stop cough, and as a migraine agent as well. Side effects for promethazine include not only respiratory depression, but also includes dry mouth, drowsiness, constipation, and lowered seizure threshold. As we can see, codeine and promethazine share a lot of the same side effects. Let's do some quick math here. The maximum daily dosage of codeine promethazine solution is 30 milliliters per day. The solution comes in pints, with one pint being 473 milliliters. Boosie said in an interview with DJ Vlad that he used to use two pints a day, or 946 milliliters when he was addicted to lean, which is 31 times the daily limit. So it's easy to see how people that use lean can overdose on it. Drinking a lot of lean can cause death by putting users in a deep sleep and halting breathing, as codeine and promethazine can both cause drowsiness and respiratory depression. This is worse than people with conditions like sleep apnea, as seen in the case of the death of Pimp C. Another adverse event associated with people using lean is the onset of seizures, which if not treated adequately can be deadly as well. As stated earlier, promethazine can lower the seizure threshold in people, meaning it can make it easier for a seizure to happen, especially in patients with a history of epilepsy. Even in patients without a history of epilepsy, seizures have been seen in people that abuse or overdose on opiates and are even seen when people suffer from nasty withdrawal symptoms, when people try to quit the drug. Add in the use of other drugs that lower the seizure threshold, like alprazolam, which is better known as Xanax, which people are known to take with lean, and you see how you can have a recipe for disaster. It should be noted that Xans can also cause respiratory depression and drowsiness as well. So yeah, taking Xans with lean is a pretty terrible idea. So in conclusion, lean is an extremely dangerous concoction. People take it because of the euphoric high feeling it gives. However, opioid tolerance is a real thing. The more people take opioids, the more tolerant they become to them, causing them to need more of the substance to get the initial effect they had. Add the addictive nature of opioids when abused, and you see how a vicious cycle can ensue, often leading to destroyed lives and death. Codeine promethazine solution is a controlled substance, and obtaining it outside of proper protocol can result in felony charges, resulting in jail time. The abuse of the substance can destroy lives in more ways than one. Opioids shouldn't be quick cold turkey, as nasty withdrawal symptoms can occur. Weaning off of opioids should be done under the care of a physician. I hope this video has been a blessing to you guys. This has been a Viceroy Flair production, and this is Farm D. Vic.